Should we use our full names or just Alex and Wayne? What do you think? Like a- aliases? No, like our full names. Yeah. Why do you get headphones and I don't? Why don't you have headphones? Should I put my headphones on even though they don't, they're don't? they not hooked up to my computer just to be on par? I don't know. You're really, you're really the, um, you are the, the catalyst for your vessel. <laughs> Yesterday, uh huh. Go ahead. I ate eleven pieces of bacon. Napped for two hours. No, don't worry. I said it was keto before I put it into my mouth, so it's healthy. <laughs> but then, but then afterwards, when you woke up and had French toast, that's no longer keto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know it was I mean? it was at noon when I was eating an ice cream drumstick that I knew that I have a problem. But. That's all See, right. here's the thing. You know, it's funny we're talking about this right now because I have two modes. I have eat every fucking thing that I see. And then I have the greens, egg whites, you know, uh, berries, all that stuff. And that's what I've been doing for the last, since I've been back from Texas, I'm down nine pounds. And because I'm just literally... Like like yesterday, I went to my favorite Italian place in L.A. It's called Pinocchio's, right? And it's just like a stand-up, order-at-the-counter thing, sit down with your food. And they had eggplant parm. They had, you know, the chicken parmesan, all the good stuff, right? I got a chicken Caesar salad, no croutons. Yeah, I always cut out croutons because I think I mean, that's that's my move. But it's not. See, the thing with me is... Wow, wow. I, I have, see what you did there. I, I have this... <laughs> I have the same modes, but I only do them twice a year. Like every January, I'll look at myself in the mirror and I'll be like, no, I'm fat as fuck. I need to make a change. Mm -hmm. So then I'll jump on some bandwagon. I tried keto twice. I lost 30 pounds. I gained 36. Then I did it again. I lost 11 pounds and a girlfriend. And then I never did keto again. And then now I'm on to intermittent fasting my way. Yeah, but here's the thing. How much did the girlfriend weigh? Because that, I mean, you could have. That was 130 pounds gone That's a lot of weight loss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Weight loss and getting into physical shape, whatever you think is good physical shape for you. 90% of that is diet. Like 10% is, is exercise, really, seriously. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could mm-hmm. lay on the fucking couch all fucking day and binge every Netflix show. And if all you're eating is like, you know, kale and, you know, sprouts and like an egg white with like a dash of vinegar, not that I would eat that, you're going to lose weight. Yeah, you know but you're going to look sick. And I don't want to look sick. You have I to don't... add protein, though. You have to have the proteins. I feel I I'm at my happiest size I've been in years, even when I had abs and I had, you know, I could run really fast and I could do all these fitnessy things. Mm. I'm actually in a better place now physically. When I look at myself in the mirror, I'm still disgusted with myself. However, I'm happily disgusted with myself. And that's because I eat healthy once in a while. I have a Peloton bike and I only use it when the payment comes out. For the membership i use it so once you gotta more. feel like you're doing it right you gotta be like mm-hmm. well if i'm paying for this thing yeah because then i could justify it yeah listen i'll tell you this i have struggled my entire life with i don't want to say body dysmorphia but something along those lines where it's like you know i grew up skinny like skinny skinny and then you know when i hit like 16 i started working out like in just non-stop like six days a week in the gym I put on like 70 pounds of muscle in two years and I didn't use any like steroids and all that shit. Being from Jersey, that was a big thing. Like a lot of people I knew were using like, you know, anabolic steroids. I didn't do that. But then as I got older, I didn't want that routine anymore. Right. So I didn't want to keep doing that. But what happens is if you get that bulky and big, if you stop doing it and you're still eating the same, you're going to turn into kind of like a dough ball. Right. So then this next half of my life is all about eating healthier, trying to, and doing just, you know, resistance stuff with body weight. Because I, 
because your brain now is more for you, you work out and you eat right to feel better up here. You don't work out. And, but like your industry too. And I, I, I remember a couple of years ago, my buddy talked me into um, going into Toronto. The film industry is huge in Toronto. Um, and there was an audition for this part where you played this fire instructor for like a web series or an info commercial. Yeah. And you're supposed to go in, stand on the mark and say, you know, you don't have what it takes and leave. And all these people ahead of me go in and they say their line and it's my turn. And I go in and she asked me a bunch of questions. I didn't get to say the line. And then I, you know, they were like, have a good day. So they deny me, but it was based on my size. I yeah. did not look and your industry is all about like, you could get a role in something, correct me if I'm wrong. And they could be like, well, we need you 20 pounds lighter or we need you 20 pounds heavier. Isn't that a thing? Yeah, it is a thing. But you know, the, the funny, the funny thing is, is like where I'm at in this enter entertainment business is, uh, is, you know, when I read for a role, it's kind of like you take, you get me as I am, you know, I'm, I'm not to the point where I'm one of those actors where like, we're signing on, you know, Joe, Joe Schlobotnik in five months, he's going to play, you know, Xena, the warrior princess, and he's got to put on muscle and he's getting a trainer. I'm not there. So it's like, my thing is, is I always say this to my wife, you know, who's also an actress. I always say the reason why I stay in shape, the reason why I, I, I do, I continue to exercise is because it's like, you're a hired assassin. So you, you literally, when you get the call, have to do it. You don't get time to, you know, work out and learn a dialect and all this shit. You either have it or you don't. Some wow. of these people out there, they have, they have trainers and dialect coaches and all this stuff. Uh, I I don't have that. Well, yeah, because it's well, it's a uh, time is money, isn't it? Like it's of you get it. There's a deadline, anyways. Yeah, I just feel mm -hmm. like that's where in that's where my mind went was in the entertainment industry. It's all about image. It's always about looking your best and. And that can yeah. get in your head and fuck with you too. But I am, yeah, like I'm, I'm good with this dad bod. I just want less titty. I feel like yeah, look, I have too much titty. Look, you're cute as fuck. I'm cute AF. Yeah. You're cute AF. Well, here's the thing though, man. It's like, like you just said, titty, right? Man, titty. Like we don't want that. Right. And I know like I'm 48, you're 41. Yeah. Right. It's like, that's the eight. I mean, you get late thirties. You know, and you start getting some titties and you're like, oh, they'll go away on their own. Oh, uh, they'll, oh, uh, they don't look bad. And the next thing you know, you're like, holy fuck. Like I could put on one of my wife's bras and, and literally like bounce around with my, you know, hairy cleavage. Yeah. But it's like, so, so that's the other thing. It's like at 48, it's like, I got to fucking, you know, I have to eat right. I have to do this shit. Because if I don't, I'm going to wind up looking like my father who's got like fucking, you know, his tits are down around his waist. It's like, I don't fucking want that. Yeah, we never had good eating practices growing up at all. And my parents, you know, paid for it. Well, you know, here's something funny, though. Like, I eat healthy and I do all this stuff. But I fucking, you know, I like tequila and I like cigarettes. And uh, I, I'll smoke a fat joint. Yeah, I, li I'm, I find when I smoke pot, which is pretty much nightly, um, I will destroy my kitchen. I, <laughs> it'll well, look the like there yeah. will, it'll look like there was a break and enter, and somebody just targeted my kitchen and then left everything <laughs> else alone. Like I woke yeah. up once there was there was an Eggo waffle box, some vanilla Oreos, some strawberry jam, and Nutella, and I was like, I don't know what, and a, and a, and I I don't know what happened. I don't know. There was Dude, a listen, there. Man, see, that's the other thing about weed is that that'll get me. It's like not at first, but coming down off of being stoned, it's like all I want is a cheesesteak. I want spaghetti and meatballs. I want toast. Oh, you know what I love? I love peanut butter and cream cheese on toast. I don't know why. I don't know why. I love it. But here's the thing. Now, when I get if I get high, and I'm coming down, I force myself to go to bed because it's usually at night. So I'm like, I'm not going in the fucking kitchen. I'm going to fucking bed. You know? I can get on to a thing. Like I, I can eat right 90% of the time. But for me, it's as soon as I slip, I'm done. I'm gone for a month. I'm For a this month. Is the other I'm thing. Gone. I mean, not that I want to stay on fucking, you know, caloric no. intake too long. But I will say this. I give myself one day a week. It's usually a Saturday where I eat whatever the fuck I want. Like this last Saturday, I ordered a large pepperoni pizza. I got, I ate that. I had a burrito, an asada steak burrito. 
from my favorite Mexican place, and I gouged myself. Now, I paid a price on the shitter. Yeah, you pay for that. You can yeah. that you yeah. You know what the thing is too, and there's a big difference between your country and my country is in the US when I would go to Vegas, we have spent a lot of time in Vegas. Yeah. The portions are massive. Down massive. Down. Here massive. the portions aren't that bad. Like a uh, I remember going to a McDonald's hungover. Um we were staying at the Al- when the Aladdin Hotel was open. Yeah, we, yeah. I woke up in the morning um, I walked to McDonald's because that's where you go. And I ordered a bucket of fries because I love McDonald's fries. A bucket <laughs> of fr- They're so good. Oh, what I used to do at McDonald's too. See, <laughs> I would always order and then I would order something for my phantom girlfriend. I never had like, I would always have a pregnant wife at home. So I'd be in the drive through and they'd, <laughs> they'd, so I'd be like, can I get a Big Mac? And then I would, but I would order like a Big Mac but just to convince them that it wasn't for me, yeah. I would be like, and no pickles on the cheeseburger, but there's pickle. I'm like, my, my wife is picking. Yeah. I she feel- doesn't like pickles. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't exist. My wife is right here. So it's funny. You're saying that because when I do go to McDonald's, like on the off chance I do, which I do, it's like crack, man. It's like fucking, it's like a good mm-hmm. Percocet. You know what I mean? I will literally order the same thing. Every time I get a big Mac meal with fries and a diet Coke. Yeah, and then so I get always oh, the Diet Coke, right? Just to make yourself feel like, well, it's not that bad, right? So then I get, and then I get a filet of fish. That's a side, that's a side dish. So the filet of fish, the side dish. I love filet of fish. It's probably my favorite fish sandwich in the world. You could take me to a fucking restaurant and they got like, you know, a fish sandwich. It's like six, 17, 18, $19 on the menu. I'd rather have a filet of fish, three of them. I feel like, like I feel like anybody who likes the fillet of fish has the same argument. I don't like fish. I'm not a fish guy. You so. should be because fish is good for you. No, I know. I take fish oil. Yeah, but I that take... leads to brain tumors. Listen, so Wayne. Whoa, I... whoa, 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 whoa. Does it really? I have no idea. So Wayne and I met on TikTok platform. Mm-hmm. I was never going to join TikTok. My son used to do it. And I'd be like, what the fuck is that? That's dumb. And then, of course, I download the app just to see what it's all about. And I find that I get on there, three hours go by, and I have no idea. And I just watched 600 videos. I show your stuff daily to people ever since I came across you. Well, well, here's the thing. You have a a niche. But I I didn't before. But you do, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's not, it's, you know, it's not, you're not, you're not trying to hit someone over the bat. Uh, hit someone over the head with a bat to try to get them to, you know, to, you know, you're just saying what you believe, right? I don't have a niche. I know you do though. You do. do. I? Yeah, you do. I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. Because so it, what I do, what I'm doing to be completely honest with you is I went through a really rough patch uh, not too long ago, my entire adult life. Like for 20 plus years, I just kicked the shit out of myself emotionally for no reason. I could tell people, I'd be in the worst mood in the world and people be like, what's wrong? I'm like, I have no idea. I just fucking hate this place. Like I've just was in a negative mindset. And when I slipped off, like I almost fell off the shelf, I call it in December. Um, and I was on TikTok before making funny shit, but literally, sorry. So when I slipped off the shelf or when I, when I, contemplated suicide because that's what happened at christmas yeah. um when i came out of it i was like fuck what am i doing like yeah. i'm a pretty rad human being so i i just started talking to myself in the mirror and then i found it was i could be funny with it so i'm like well let's take it on tiktok and people like it because there's no they fluff do. man it's yeah. not where you're not i'm not I, fuck people will send you messages and they'll They'll be like, hey, can you give me some advice? No, I'm not giving you advice because I'm not, that's not, I'm not a coach. Yeah. I'm not a therapist. I'm somebody it. who's just trying to stay afloat. And the second I did that, I started me- meeting people like you. And it's just funny people that, 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 that kind of think the same way you do, you know, the same, yeah. the same way. It's just wicked, man. Like it's a cool app, um, but it's an yeah. app at the end of the day. So I think like the third video I ever did was just literally, I was in my backyard having some beers and I picked up my phone and I was just looking at my phone and I went, I was born in 1972. 
and I drink a lot of water or whatever. That's why I look this way. Now I posted that thinking that's the dumbest thing I've ever done. And it didn't, I didn't give a fuck. Next thing I know, it's got over a million views and people are literally telling me that I'm, I'm the, the ugliest person they've ever seen in their life. <laughs> and it I mean, felt absolutely like, wonderful. It feels it was, great. It was just like, yeah, but the comments, I'm going to say 80% of the comments were like, you look like dog shit. My grandpa's, my grandpa's 90 and he looks younger than you. Yeah, that's when I fell in love with you. It was when I saw your water. You drank whiskey. Like it was just like. (laughs) I I I posted a video the other day of me and my kid. We were trying to imitate you with uh, on the roller coaster. Oh, (laughs) and there was an insta. There's an Instagram in Toronto that shared it to their feed, and it's got like I don't know a bunch of followers. It's it's like a BuzzFeed thing. Yeah. I read the comments and people are like, I hope he lost the kids in the divorce. What a piece of shit douchebag. Like just horrible, horrible, horrible. things. Like, people are horrible, dude. And you know, the funniest thing about it is most of them have no profile picture, two followers. And like, you know, and they probably at home, like, you know, just fucking like contemplating like razor blading their cat's fucking throat. Social media to me, I hate it, mm-hmm. but I also love it. So there, this is like this is like this strange kind of, you know, yin yang where it's like I despise social media. Well, our and generation's it, taking it over, man. I know it is. I know it is. Here's something funny: my Instagram account. Do you know why I only have 450 followers? Because it's my eighth account. My first one, I had a nice number of followers. I can't remember how many, like five thousand, six thousand, whatever. It was decent, right? Hated it, deleted it. Went back on, said, okay, my my agents think I should have an Instagram account. Went back on. Couldn't use the last name I used, which was just Alex Scooby. Had to come up with a different name. Signed on. Then I got like 3,000 followers. Hated it, deleted it. Dude, I've done that. This is my final straw. This one I have now, it's final. If I delete this, I'm never going back. So I, this, I had Instagram before I deleted it. And the only reason I have Instagram now is because I found, I went to barber school a couple years ago because I had a dream. Who's Barbara? Barber. Barber. It was more Barber. It was more I went to Barbara's school of love and design. She's the middle-aged woman that still has plastic on. No, like 70. Anyways, so I went to barber school and I put I I created this barber handle called the Lefty Barber. Now let me tell you something about me. I do everything I do in life, I do it mediocrely. Like there's That's nothing great. like I'm really good at. I'm not really good at one thing. I'm yeah. just okay at a bunch of shit. So you're like, a jack of all trades, master of none. Not even like mediocre. Yeah, not even. I wouldn't even say master of none. I wouldn't even add that. I just I'm a jack of all trades. However, I probably wouldn't trust him to do any of them. <laughs> like every I've been cutting hair now, my buddy's hair for three years. I got a full entire barbershop and I'm that asshole that um, has to have the best of everything. Wait, when you I have a client hair. list like for barbering? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got ten buddies that won't pay me to cut their fucking hair. That's what I have. Would you cut my hair someday? Yeah. Oh yeah. I gotta yep. go. Okay, so Wayne's in Canada. I'm mm-hmm. in in uh, in uh, United States. Are yeah. you from? Are you live in the same town you grew up in? No, I live. Um, let's convert. Like I live on the opposite side of the country. So I'm from the West Coast. Okay. And now I live above. Toronto because I was in the military for almost 20 years so I moved all over Canada and I ended up here and then stayed here yeah and I love it here I live quite a ways from a big city but I love it here it's a so you're on the you're on the east coast now of Canada no I'm central Canada I'm I'm five hours I'm just I'm on Lake Ontario okay so right across is Buffalo so here's something interesting because I grew up on the east coast of the United States in in Jersey yeah and I slowly worked my way west. So I was in Chicago for eight years doing beautiful you know, city, beautiful city. Then I went to, uh, then I came to Los Angeles and, and now of course I'm you know, 
in Texas too at some points. But but uh, it's interesting. So we did kind of like a little swap. Like you were on that side, I was on this side. You kind of went that way, and I went that way, dude. How come we're not married yet? <laughs> I know. I um, it's it's a hetero thing I don't for know if me. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a hetero thing for me. But I would marry. You're my type. Like yeah, if you're you were, my type. Like, yeah, if I you mean, were, if I yeah. like balls, you'd be. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we 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 are legit. Um. I wouldn't say Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, but I would, I would, I, I would say, cause I, I do a lot of comparisons to my personality to the full house cast, just because I have a daughter that won't stop watching it. Wow. I would say we are like uncle Jesse and aunt Becky. I want to tell you something even funnier, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Right. Mm -hmm. So this was about 12 years ago. I was on, I was at a bar on a Fairfax in Los Angeles. It was right across from CBS studios. And I was in there, you know, tanking it up with some tequilas and everything. And I, I noticed behind me these two little people uh, sitting there. And, and I was like, oh, my God, is that Mary Kate and Ashley? And they had some dude with them. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is. And then all of a sudden, they, they like lit up a joint in the bar. And I was like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some. <laughs> so I sat down and just sat there and smoked a joint with Mary Kate and Ashley. And it was one of the most bizarre, because it's not like I'm a fan of Mary Kate and Ashley's brilliant work. Although, you know, I'll give them credit. They were child stars. Um, but it was so bizarre to sit there staring at them. And I was like, no shit. Mary Kate and Ashley, holy fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just Was it good bizarre. weed? I was so drunk, I didn't even know. Oh. I don't even know. You know how you get you get to a certain point, like you're drinking and then you smoke a joint. And you're like, I don't know if I'm high. Yeah. Or like synergy is like melting my brain. You know, what I mean? can't. I'm not a big drinker, man. Like, that's why I love cannabis. I used to be a big drinker. I enjoy bourbon and scotch, but I because I don't I can't be hung over the next day. I don't know how you function because you're up like every morning at six o'clock in the morning. Good to go. Or you're a good but because like, I because I had you know my kids you know well look when I I grew up in Jersey my family owned like a, a hamburger hot dog stand but it also opened for breakfast for the fishermen at four in the morning yeah so I had to fucking ride my bike from Manasquan, New Jersey at four like quarter to four in the morning all the way to Belmar Beach which is probably like eight or nine miles maybe ten every morning open up the stand. Clean the fucking flat iron grills. Like everyone's going crazy over these flat iron blackstone grills. Dude, stop when it. I was, when I was 13, when I was 13, we had an eight foot uh, flat top grill. Another thing people do is they talk about these fucking smash burgers. There's no fucking such thing as a fucking smash burger. It's just a fucking hamburger, asshole. It's so a I don't want to interrupt you. So when you launched on me a couple weeks ago for saying i got my blackstone grill which i'm super stoked about yeah, it right. and we were we finally made burgers the other day and my son looks at me he's like dad we need to have smash burgers i snapped on him like i've been preaching <laughs> for 20 years about it i'm like don't there's no such thing as a smash burger it's a hamburger <laughs> and i gave him the same lecture you gave me and i hadn't even used it in this so i'm with you now my son is in the shower right now trying oh, to wow. rap He's trying to rap and it's horrible. You know what we should do? We should do a podcast where we put a mic outside the door of our kid. No, we shouldn't do that because I don't know what I don't want to know what the fuck they're doing in there. Nope. That kid showers three times a day. At yeah, home. he ain't showering. Oh. What? Not through my ear hair. I got to trim my ear hair. So that's a thing at our age, hey? Oh, God. Holy. I'll be like just scratching my ear and then I'll feel like four of them. And then I'm like, why are they out here? I have, I bought an ear trimmer six years ago. And that's all I use, man. I use it in my nose, ears. Me too. One of the worst things someone can do at a certain age, specifically a man, is let their fucking shit grow so long that you're literally looking at it going, is that a fucking rat? crawling out of your fucking ear it's like what are you doing just trim your shit man it doesn't it takes what 10 seconds not trim even your shit. i don't understand how there are people on this planet that don't take care of themselves look man you can't wear a warrior hat or a sexy as fuck hat if you don't trim your fucking ear hair or no story. yeah you know yeah. 
Yeah, no, I'm with you. It's a big deal to me. That, that just it hurts my little, feelings. It do, do a little bit of maintenance, would you? I You're shave not, my bush. I shave my bush. I I don't shave at all. I leave a little uh, a landing strip, but I shave. You know, I bought that Manscaper 2.3.0 or the Manscaper that's advertised all over the internet. There's a 4.0 now. Maybe even a 5.0. I'm like, why didn't we get it right the first time? Did you and ever they raise your nuts. Uh, I tried. I can't I tried. Do it. So I can't. I can't even use the Manscaper. The whole selling feature of this thing is is you can't cut yourself. So I'm like, well, this is fucking perfect really? because I could barely see it. Now, now I remember what I wanted to say earlier, and this ties into that, is that to go back to weight loss, the, a male's favorite part of weight loss, well, at least mine and everybody I know, is that as, yeah, you just see, <laughs> yeah, you like see, and I remember I lost like 20 pounds, like, holy fuck, I could see another half an inch of that thing. Like, <laughs> it's, it's the greatest, like, I don't, yeah, like somebody... Somebody asked you, like, how much weight did you lose? I'm like, like two and a quarter inches of weight, man. Like, <laughs> it is the, now I don't just see this because I've got a really ugly belly button. Like, I don't have a great, I have an Audi. Like, I have the worst, but Wait, it's like, what? yeah, like I have, they call it an umbilical hernia. And and if we can get this podcast on the health side of it, um, it's this is very important information. An umbilical yeah, hernia. Yeah, yeah, a little. yeah, it's gross. It's gross. I don't like looking at it. It looks like Sigourney Weaver in Aliens, like when somebody's coming out. It's just mad. It's me, fixed let's now. See it. Let's I see. Can't, I can't. I can't. Well, that's not bad. That's oh, not no. Bad. It's like, it's, yeah. Anyways, whenever I poke it, I get a Scottish accent too. So I'm like, great. It's great. Oh, I love just. I mean, hey, you, when you, you poke your belly button, do you get a sharp pain in your asshole? I do. That's prostate cancer. Awesome. <laughs> if you Google it, that's what prostate. I Googled. <laughs> it's the worst. It's I, the I worst. found a bump. This is this is the shit that you do in your older age. I found a bump. I was like rubbing my chest. Yeah. Not like in a sexual way or sensual way, but I was rubbing yeah. my chest. And I and I I felt this bump. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is that? So I kept rubbing it and it kept yeah. getting bigger. Yeah. And then I Googled it and it Don't. said you have bone cancer. Don't do it. <laughs> like <laughs> Query number one, bone cancer. Well, you know, it's funny. It's like, okay, so I have these, uh, I have, I've got quite a few removed, but I have, um, I get lipoma, right? Which is What's genetic. That? Lipoma is like uh, these little kind of pea-sized, uh, they're small. Uh, they're like fat cells that kind of make like a little ball under the skin. And I've had them kind of like on my body. But when I first started getting them, when I was like 19, 20 years old, I was like, oh my God. This has got to be a brain tumor, even though it's on my elbow. <laughs> and like, I fucking finally got them removed. And the doctor's like, they're lipoma. They're kind of common if it's in your family. So now I just let them, uh, but my you know parts of my body, it's like Braille. You can literally go like up my thigh. There's like these little, long, you can't see them. If you look, you have to feel it. So next time I'm with you, you got to feel my thigh. Okay. Noted. Here's a loose question for you. Okay. Why? Why the fuck do you do what you do for a living? Because I can't do anything else. <laughs> no, I, I uh, well, it's funny because I, you know, when I was young, young, I was always a ham. So I always, we call it a ham here. Like, it's like a ham. Yeah, like I always wanted right. attention. I always wanted, you know, um, and just oh, doing man. goofy shit, just like it didn't matter what I was doing. I could literally like, you know, you know, take a brick and like drop it on my foot and just so people would go, what the fuck did that kid just do? That's horrible. <laughs> um, and then I remember distinctly when I was about nine or 10, I went to my cousin's uh, party. He's a lot older than me. Went to his party and he knew people from New York and he came up to me at the party and I was just there as one of the, you know, my mom's kid at this party. And, and he goes, hey, there's a she casts uh, a soap opera in New York city, one of his friends. And I was like, what? Well, maybe she'll cast me. <laughs> so I walk up to her <laughs> in the middle of this fucking party and I attempt to show her that I can do a split. And I couldn't, and I hurt my testicles. And you then I got up. So I, <laughs> 
So, but that's why I do. So then, you know, I went through high school, didn't do, didn't do theater. And then I had to go to college and I didn't want to take marketing. So I took acting 101 in Brookdale in Lincroft, New Jersey. And I fucking loved it. It was like therapy, man. It was like therapy. It's like when I was on stage, nothing else mattered. Right. So my outside life didn't matter. The, the fact that my father and I fucking hate each other that, you know, my, you know, just the stuff in my life, you know what I mean? Didn't matter. And I, uh, and then it just went from there. You know, after, after that junior college, I auditioned at NYU. I auditioned at Syracuse. I auditioned in, to, at DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois. I got accepted to all three of them for the theater department, for their drama schools. And I chose Chicago because it was furthest away from my home. So I went there and did theater. I got kicked out after my second year. It's a long story short. Kicked out of drama school after my second year uh, because I didn't want to take yoga every morning and do all this shit. But I got cast in plays in Chicago, did you know professional theater out there, came out to L.A. because I got cast on a show called E.R. as a recurring. I did two episodes and they actually paid to move me from Chicago to L.A. because we were filming exteriors in Chicago and interiors, at Warner Brothers in Burbank, California. And that's how I came to L.A. And ever since then, I've just been struggling. <laughs> It's not struggling though, man. No, I'm doing good. That's doing the good, one per, that's the one percent right there. That is living like your dreams. Yeah, I, I always was curious about I all I have always been blown away by that industry and and how because it's like the culture of no, even athletes too. I have a oh, friend yeah. that played in the NHL and and he said the best part of what I did was being told that I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And, and that I, that I proved to everybody else that I could. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's where entertainers, if it's a musician or a comedian, mm -hmm. you know, or an actor or yeah. an athlete, fuck, everybody says no. And everybody says you can't do it. I, I've always wanted to ask you that. So I'm glad that I did. And that was a good minute and a half, man. Cause it makes sense. Good for you. Good yeah, for man. You. Look, I'll tell you, man. It's like there there's, you know, there is a thing that you're talking about your friend in the NHL saying that like, you know, I did it when people said I couldn't, that is part of it. it there is a, a, a touch of that, but I will say this, man, when I'm, I'm about to go into production for a new play uh, that a wonderful playwright wrote, and we're going into production where our first table reads on Saturday. And I love doing theater. You know, it's great doing TV or being in a film or something like that. That's all great. Or doing voiceovers. Cause I've done a ton of voiceovers for products, but Doing a play, there's no cut. So once you get out on stage, lights up, live audience, you are going, man. You're going. And sink or swim, you're in it. So that's that's the high I get. So I always say, like, people are like, so what's it like, like being on a TV series like King of Queens or The Fosters or, you know, whatever the fuck I'm doing? It's like, well, between action and cut, it's wonderful. The rest of it is boring as shit. Sitting around, waiting to eat, sitting in your trailer, smoking another cigarette, you know, whatever it is, like you're just literally standing there and yeah. action and cut is at the most like a minute. And yeah. the rest of the time you're like, makeup, hair, you know, I mean, like, you know, wardrobe, like you got a wardrobe fitting. You're like, oh, fuck, where do I got to go for that? Like, you know, so it's just the high of what it used to be for me is gone. Now it's just about the work. Right. So now it's just about being as honest as I possibly can with the dialogue that's given to me. That's all. I don't know why I just went off on that tangent. No, it makes sense. I, I am going to come watch you perform in a play. I am well, going to run from March, uh, March, April, May with a possible three months, ex month extension, uh, which would be June, July, August in L.A. In L.A., the White Fire Theater. Yeah, That's cool, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I. I'm not going to be in a play. I would though. I played a don. I did play a donkey in a play in grade four, oh and my it was God, tell me. yeah. Well, I, I you know what I did play. I was in grade five, um, and I got cast as a donkey, and I ended up. I ended up becoming. I was a pig. Well, that you're a pig played. Or a donkey? No, I was I, I got cast as a donkey, but then they recast me as the pig. But the best part about this pig <laughs> is I'm not even I'm not even making this it up. It Charlotte's the, Web, was it? No, it was a, I played Rodney Dangerfield as a pig. So I'd be like, pigs get no respect. No <laughs> respect. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then the next 
that I still remember my line because that was pretty much my line throughout. I would come out and be like, no respect. I, yeah, I remember the stage because that's where I then joined the high or the junior high school band and took up the tuba that oh, I never learned wow, how to play the tuba. the tuba. No, I used to remember that they used to have these things called phone books. Do you remember the old phone book with the yellow yeah, pages? Uh, yeah. And for some reason, I don't know why, but we still get one every year. Like this big brick that comes to, and I just fucking throw it away. It's like, what? Cause it's the same guy that keeps calling you over and over again that you tell him. He's like, fucker. I'll show him. We're, let's set. Hey, that guy just swore at me. Send him another phone book. <laughs> send him another fucking phone book. <laughs> uh, on you motherfucker i read them yeah i used to get drunk at, and i would wake up in the morning i was at my army days i would wake up in the morning i'd be half passed out i'd have a half eaten pita with like mayo and black olives strewn over my chest that son of a bitch and the, and the yellow pages would be open up to the massage section right and it would just be you're i never made the phone canadian. call you're yeah, a dirty I'm, fucking canadian I never, I never, ever did it though. What's with That's these the French? Cana- I mean, are you, like, what's with the Canadians with the dirty? Not French, not French. Well, you are. No. Nope. Hey, Don't look. As far as I'm concerned, it. I'm from Jersey. If you live in Canada, you're French. You're French. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. You how, know, horrible, I mean, how horrible is that to say? Like, <laughs> if you're from Canada, you're French. We. Oui. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> it's, it's the <laughs> worst. It's the worst. Oh. Have you heard like a true French Canadian accent? I probably have. I don't know if I. Oh know. my god, it is painful on a yeah. boat. Uh, they're great people. Yeah, wonderful people. They love being a part of Canada. So Quebec actually wants to separate. Like that's their whole thing. A lot Isn't of. Isn't it pronounced Quebec? Uh, Quebec. Huh? Que- Quebec. 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 We don't uh, talk like that because the Quebec. That's what they, and the, there's no E's, they're H's. So they say the, I speak the Hanglish. I speak the Hanglish, very not good. What the fuck is Hanglish? It's English with an H. Yeah, but what's that about? I mean, why would they even do that? There's no doot that they, um, they we don't even say doot. No, we say doubt. I don't um, do it. I hope one you know day what? you have. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what you, you have to play a Canadian and you call me for advice. I'm like, oh. <laughs> It's kind of like Boston. Wayne, Wayne, I got to be Canadian for a day. What do I do? Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Are people and, in Canada supposed to be nice? <laughs> yeah, no, we're just really shitty at being mean. Like, okay, See, because that's what I thought. It's like, you're not nice. You just suck at being mean. Yeah, no, like, uh, we'll insult you, then instantly feel horrible about it. About it. <laughs> about it, yeah. We're like, fuck you, you... Fuck it. I, I, I'm sorry. I was probably just protect, projecting my own emotions onto you. And what I really meant to say is that I got some things to work through. Yeah, no, we're not that nice. You Come know who's Canada. really nice? Come to Canada. Everyone here is French. And we suck at being mean. Yeah. <laughs> and we put gravy on our fries. Have you ever had fries and yeah, gravy? Yeah, I tried. Yeah, fuck, man. No, Why? beef gravy, not chicken gravy. Wait, is that do you guys do that fucking poutine too, right? No, I don't do poutine. What you the hell? look Isn't at that me. Cheese curds? That's French. Poutine. Yeah, but you're from, but you are French. You're in Canada. No, I'm from the prairies. I'm more Montana. Like if I was from the US, I'd be from Montana. So you're into your cousin. My cousin is into me. <laughs> and I'm adopted. So it didn't count uh, three times. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious yeah i was oh, I, I worked with this comedian and we were driving we li- i lived on the west coast i lived on vancouver island and we were listening to the radio station i think it was like 97.3 cool fm it was this crazy radio yeah, station i love 97.3 yeah. cool fm it's so good and they said they get on there and they go we're looking for callers to tell us what what would adult you tell child you and people would call in, adult me would tell child me that I shouldn't have drank so much last night. Uh, and adult me would tell child me that blah, 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 blah. You know, and then all of it, you know, when somebody is on the phone with the radio station, but their volume's turned up and yeah. the feedback happens. Uh-huh. Well, I hear the feedback and they're like, uh, can you turn down the volume? And I just look and I see his hand go to the volume knob and turn it down. And I look and he's on the phone and he's smiling and he looks at me and he goes, Adult me would tell child me not to go to my Uncle Mark's house November 3rd 
1986. <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes silent. <laughs> he hangs up the phone and he looks at me. He's like, just telling the truth. And then we kept on driving. I didn't bring it up. I actually now realize that I know two people that were touched by their uncles. Coming up next on Touched by an Uncle. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe show that's on, maybe that should be the podcast. Show me on the fillet of fish where your uncle touched you. <laughs> I actually did not get touched by an uncle. I got touched by a babysitter. Come on, a male babysitter. No. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that was bad. Whoever yeah. hires a male babysitter. He was our fucking neighbor, and it was like he was just like the nice. He was the nicest guy. You know, he was like eighteen. I was like seven. You motherfucker, that motherfucker. But I'll tell you what, here's something interesting about this. Let's get real dark and disgusting. Yeah. So this happened to me for a couple of years, right? I blocked it out of my head from the time I was probably, you know, young till one day I'm in a breathing class in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm doing this deep breathing, right? I was probably 21. And all of a sudden, this is a true story. All of a sudden, I'm like, <gasps> and I fucking freaked the fuck out. Panic attack, like first major panic attack, like shaking and can't breathe, having a heart attack, you know? And that's kind of when my panic shit started back then. But anyway, whatever. That's just kind of into a different story. It's but not, though. It's not because that would work. That shit oh. is, yeah. No, and I'm it's funny that protected me for years. I'm just getting into that now through all the stuff that I'm doing because I'm trying to address all my relationship issues because I have abandonment issues from when I was in the womb. It's crazy. Like there's things that you can't verbalize from your childhood that you can, cause the memories are still there with that neural pathway stuff and stuff. So that like what you just told me, yeah. All jokes aside about the other stuff, that is why I'm trying to go down that road so I can address that shit and get through that stuff because that shit stays with you for fucking ever, man. No, it does. You know, it's you know it's wild though. I will say this. I will say this. I've had shrinks on and off for years. Love them. I think everyone should have a shrink. I really do. Even if you think you're just so great and everything's fine, I really do think you should have this stranger that you can literally go and word vomit on. I do. I just feel like, you know, they may, hey, look, you pay them. But I will say this. I am over and past that what had happened because I've been through it. I've been down. I've been in it. I've been I've gone through it. You know, the, the, you know the, the healing, so to speak. But I will say this. I look at people differently now. So I have kids. When my kids were younger, I was very alert and aware of who was around my children. You see what I'm saying? Also now, I have other people in my life who have been through the same similar thing. Might not have been a babysitter, might have been a, a fucking father or their father's best friend or, you know. And we can we literally have gotten to a place now where we joke with each other about it. However sick that may sound, we will literally just kind of joke about it. Because our brains have moved past the, oh my God, you know, like that's, that's gone. But now it's more of like, well, he made me watch him beat off while I ate Cheerios. <laughs> like, I mean, just like, just kind of shit like that, you know, like, because there's nothing else to say about it. So if it does come up, we just go, ah, fuck that shit. You know? Well, dark humor is, is is like the world's greatest coping mechanism, man. So oh, yeah, that's oh, the yeah. greatest. And if you can do that, like it's yeah. not it's not condoning what had happened. It's just no. What are no. you gonna do? Like, are you gonna stay as a seven year old forever? And some people mm. do. Some people can't move past shit, and that's kind of why I'm on this big kick. Is just it happened. I get it. It's horrible. But if yeah. you you're just kicking yourself in the face. Well, a not lot only of these, that, but I, I'm a big believer, Wayne, in uh, we die every minute. It's like we, we, we are constantly dying. Like that seven-year-old me doesn't exist. That, you know? that person, that child has been dead 
for 41 years. Do you know what I mean? Just like the 16 year old me and the 25 year old me and the 38 year old me, they're all gone. This is me now, right? Today. And five years from now, this person won't exist. I'll have moved on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I gross. really believe that. I just believe that wholeheartedly. You know? Yeah, my whole belief structure is is we have one fucking opportunity to create a legacy and and I don't want my legacy to be I don't want the speech that's read about me behind the podium to suck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> I I really don't like I wanted yeah. to read. I knew Wayne Hanna for 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 25 years and he was one of the raddest motherfuckers to grace my presence. That's important to me. I don't care how I get there. I don't know. And and holding on to the shit that I can't control isn't going to help me get there. No, it's right? not. I mean, you're, we you know. fucking kick our ass. We kick we our own asses so hard for no yeah. reason. Well, you guilt will... too. Guilt's huge. It's like guilt for what? It's like, it's... you know, I divorced, you know, I divorced my first wife. They were on the East Coast. I had to be in LA for work. So I knew I was going to leave. Mm -hmm. My son was only seven. My daughter was only nine. It's like I had to go. But I fucking had to have, I, every summer, they came here for, th you know, anywhere from like six weeks to two and a half months, as long as before the school started. And I'd have them here every summer. I sent, you know, I, you know, and then, you know, you send gifts, you send extra gifts, you send, you know, you do all this stuff out of guilt. And even today, my kids are grown. My son lives here now, right? He's 19. He's trying to get his LA roots down, right? Uh, he's on the East Coast right now visiting his sister. But it's like... Um, the guilt that I still sometimes feel that I have to go, I have to literally say to myself in my head, shut the fuck up, dude. You did the best you fucking could. Literally the best I could do. And they, and they love you. My, my daughter turns eight, uh, 22 tomorrow. Like her and I have an amazing relationship. My okay. son and I, we go off roading together. We fucking hang out. We have, you know, we'll smoke a joint together. If that's, there i mean you know it's like that kind of shit it's like so i should not feel any guilt about any of it because that's the past this is the present present right now everything is great well if yeah. you look at it too like and you look at humans we all at the end of the day we are all exact we are all the same we are just human beings and our stories may be different but they're very similar in when it comes to guilt and grief and all that shit, my son is the product of a one night stand. I met yeah. his mom once. She was like 10 plus years older than me. And I've only been building a relationship with him. He's 17 since he was 13. Yeah, this is the, easy. this is the second, this is the second time he has hung out with his sister. That's not easy, man. It's not easy. And no. it's something that, and I've said this to him because he's like, dad, I, you know, we can't control it. Let's move past it. Because I, I ha had so much guilt, but I had to forgive myself for the shit that I did to myself and that I did to other people. Because if I sat there and I punished myself, he's the one that gets his head kicked in over it because yeah. I'm not showing up. I'm not giving him the best version of me. So does it suck? Yeah. Does it, do I wish that I had met one person and spent 50 years with them? Nope. I have no fucking, I have guilt, but I have zero regrets. And that is the big difference yeah. for me too. I don't regret yeah. shit, man. And I said that to you. You will, you will do all that crazy shit that you're going to go through when you get in trouble, when you drink too much, when you fuck too much, when you do all these things, mm -hmm. that shit one day is going to all make sense. You're going to be, you're going to be yeah. at this place in your life where all that stupid shit that we have done is just going to make sense. And, and that's why I have no regrets. I have guilt. I, yeah. I have guilt and I get it. And it's all surrounded around my kids. Mm -hmm. I share almost 50% with my daughter, but I still don't think it's enough. I still always check in with her. Are you okay? Are you happy? Yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. Fuck man. She's that's all she knows. The guilt that I have felt towards, you know, my kids and myself and what had happened in the, you know, in the past had all that not had happened. I would not have met the woman that I'm with now who. I believe like soulmate shit. Do you know what I mean? I mean, we're that tight. Do you know what I mean? Um, she's in Texas right now, or she'd probably say hello, but it's like, it's, it's like, if that didn't happen when it happened, exactly when it happened, we would not have met. We wouldn't be together right now. 
We None of this would be, places. nothing in your life would be nothing. The same. It so be- it's like, there is a reason for everything. You may not like the way the path is set up while you're on the path, but at the end of the path, and by the way, the path never ends. It just keeps going. That's you know great. what I mean? But, but it's like, I mean, we started doing this. Who knows? You know? Yeah. You know, uh, you never fucking know. Just as long as we're having fun doing it, it doesn't fucking matter. No. It doesn't. I don't, and that's why I don't regret shit, man. Like, I I feel like everything that has happened to me has happened because of the energy that I put out there. And, And I've proven it over the last six months when I changed my mindset from this shitty, negative, woe is me, bullshit mentality to the, you know what, I'm fucking awesome. And this is the, you know, yeah. this is, I'm going to, I have no secrets. I will tell anybody anything. I could give yeah. two shits what people think or, 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 or how they feel That's about me. That's a great me. way to be, man. But as soon as I switch from that to this way, mm-hmm. the fuck, my entire narrative, the people that I hang out with, the people that I speak to, the people that spend time with me, completely different. I was dating yeah. a girl solidly. And when the switch went, when my switch went, I broke up with her instantly. Twenty yeah, Within 24 hours, we just didn't. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. And that is when you meet. So for you, because you and your wife have been together for what, 13 years, I think? We've been together almost 12. 12, 12. years? Wow. That was close. Think about where you were 12 years ago when you met her. You, oh, you, you had to have been a drugs well i was doing a you, lot of stuff yeah. but you were still you had to... I was out in la i was auditioning a lot i was i was working as an actor and i was single and i just you know just was like fuck it and people get so caught up and so angry with divorce i'm like you just you just spent the last three years bitching about your partner not providing or not thriving or yeah. like doing nothing for you then you then you split up and now you're bitching that they're like just be happy you, yeah. you don't need to be mad about, about re, or you don't need to be mad about realizing that somebody's just not to not meant to be with you. You know what's wild, man? I I always find it so so uh, just torturous and and just I feel so badly for people that stay in relationships that are just horrible. Like there's no connection. That's a lighter thing. Physical violence. It's pretty heavy. Um, I think connections as heavy as physical violence, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like, but yes. Okay. So what I'm saying is they come up with these reasons why they, sh- why they feel they should stay. Right. And all their, and they don't have, you know, we're not on this planet for a long time. So they're literally missing out on something that could be so wonderful. Now, unless these people, be it man or woman, have a knack for finding shitty people to be in relationships with. Cause I know a few of those too, which it's like, they go from one asshole or one bitch to another. They well, that's because their shit in their head. That's, yeah. that, that's, you know, exactly. that was exactly. me. Chaos breeds chaos, man. It's crazy, man. But it's so point, you, you just want to chill, dude. You just want to chill, man. You just want to laugh. I, I'm tired. I said this to, you know, to my girlfriend, I said, I'm tired. I'm tired of, I I said, I've put, I've, I've lived a life. I want to spend the next 20 years just smiling and being chill and not stressing about new. We're not going to struggle anymore. We're not struggling because we're done having kids. We're not struggling to buy a home because we own homes. We're, we're not stressed. So let's just, it doesn't need to be difficult, but the problem is, is a lot of people, and this is my opinion. I, but a lot of people compromise the non-compromisable shit. They compromise that they, they don't have the, they don't have that, the, that fundamental Mary Poppins list where they, they have the fundamental things that, that will keep them thriving and they yeah. compromise the shit that you can't compromise. You can agree to disagree on politics, some on religion, you can agree to disagree on some things, but there are fundamental things that you cannot compromise because when yeah. you do, when you compromise those things, it ends up being sacrifice, and that sacrifice turns to resentment. Then you're back in the fucking gym trying to get in your best shape of life because you're a 40 plus year old going on a dating app to try oh. it again. And you just, it's this oh, fucking cycle dude. over and cool. over and over again. I was just done with it, man. Like, yeah. no, I get it, man. Hey, look, you know, you know, some people feel that they don't deserve things. Fuck. Now, they might not admit it, right? They might not come out and say, like, I don't deserve that. I shouldn't have that. That's not for me. I don't deserve that. The truth is we all fucking deserve it. 
We all deserve it. Unless you're a fucking murderer or a fucking pedophile. Yeah, you don't deserve shit. But, no. but most of us, 99.9% of us deserve everything we want. Good. I just want to say this because it, 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 you say we're all entitled to, you know, like we're all entitled to being happy and to doing these things. Mm -hmm. But I learned, I learned about limiting beliefs this morning. I didn't know what that was. Have you ever heard the term limiting beliefs? Of course. Yep. I never, I've never heard that. I've, I keep hearing it through social media and stuff. I keep hearing it, but I didn't know what it meant. So I was talking yeah. to my girlfriend this morning about limiting beliefs and she's telling me about it. And I fucking snapped. My post this morning was, was about that. Yeah. Who in the fuck gets to decide what you are capable of? I know, man. I Do know. you know how many motherfucking people are out there? greeting like do in a job that they hate or in a relationship that they loathe mm -hmm. or with kids that fucking suck like this one in front of me i'm kidding i love you um <laughs> but people are because somebody told them that they're not fucking good enough or that or they told themselves that they don't yeah. deserve it mm -hmm. no no but that's a learned response that's a learned response a feeling that you are not worthy or that you, okay, your, your limited belief in yourself, correct? So that stuff is a learned response. Someone, somewhere, some at some point, put that in your brain, right? Yeah. Hey, dude. Hey. What's up, dude? Nothing, just playing Call of Duty. Uh-huh, yeah, Call yeah. of Duty, huh? I wanted a paternity test, but fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Yeah, that was, I, yeah. Someone like put that in their head, man. I mean, you know, in our head or whatever. It's like that's that's what it is. I mean, and we all have it. Like people used to say to me, like, I, I get pissed that I that I wasn't like a series regular on a series years ago, or or you know, in a big movie. Like I have friends that, that just like took off and and, and, and huge money and, and all this stuff. And um, I used to beat myself up about it. And someone was like, "Well, you don't believe that you should do it." You're afraid of it. And, you know, I think they were kind of right in a way. Like I was afraid of becoming what I wanted the most. Does that make any sense? But now I don't care about that. It's like, I don't think about that stuff. I'm not like, I, I want to be a huge star and I want to do, no, man, I just want to work at what I love doing, which is being an actor um, and doing a podcast with some French Canadian in Canada. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. I will say this though, to end it on what you just said, yeah. but you are doing what you love because you, you said as much as you love the TV stuff and the film mm -hmm. side between um, action and cut is great, but all the, the fluff in between is bullshit. It's all, yeah, it's all crap. You're doing, you, you're, you are a theater actor and you are yeah. getting to do what you love. And it, it, it still is a therapy to you. And that's because, you fucking do what you want to do because you don't actually give a fuck what other people think. No, I don't. Right? I, I don't. You know, you know who I care? I, I care what my, my close people think. But, you but know they all I mean? believe in you. They do. I mean, I don't want to upset uh, my wife, right? I don't want, I don't want to upset her with something I've said to her or whatever. Like I, I respect her too much for that, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to upset my kids by what I say to them. Um, you know, unless I have to say something to my kids, right? Like, you know, this may hurt your feelings, but, um, close friends, like you're, you're becoming a close friend of mine. Oh, it's like, thanks man. But that's true. So it's yeah, like, I know it is. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's, there's a select group of people that I do care about them and I care about how they feel about me. And it's like, so that's fine. But the great part about what I'm saying is, is that they've already accepted me for what I am. I don't have to be someone else. I don't have to think I'm someone else. I don't have to try to, to, you know, curb my brain or what comes out of my mouth. This is me. This is me. Well, those people in your life and those people in my life, and I can appreciate that because you are becoming a friend. And I do yeah. consider, I say, oh, my buddy Alex or my friend Alex. Yeah. Um, that's the true audience. That's it. That's who you, that's, that's who we do it for ourselves. And we do it for yeah. the people that are close to us. No, I get that. And that's, but that's, that's, um, 
what's the word for that? Mature. Mature. Noble. That's some noble shit, man. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, not the people that leave comments like on a stupid fucking stupid TikTok video I do. And believe me, they're dumb. But it's like people who are like, you're an idiot or you're washed up. Like, you know, I get that a lot too. You're a washed up actor. Yeah, you, yeah you, you're on a show called The King of Queens 45 years ago. Oh, you fucking washed up. It's like, okay, yeah, okay. I'm whatever you think I am, man. I got no time for that. You know, <laughs> got no time for this shit. You know? <laughs> if you want to see washed up, come to Brisbane, Australia, and I'll take you to the brothel. Um, <laughs> uh, fuck.